coach at Camden Frontier. And, Coach, how are you? Good. How are you? Thanks. Yeah, doing pretty good. Uh, you've been at the helm here now going into your third year. And uh, how have you kind of grown into the job? Obviously, you coached at the middle school level for a long time, and then at the JV level, and now as a varsity coach. How has it been going for you so far? Well, you know, the first year it was definitely uh, an adjustment, all the stuff you have to do, you know, off the field, you know, getting physicals around and, you know, equipment and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I'm starting to think that I would almost have it figured out, but I know that I don't. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's been good. You know, we're at a you know smaller school and we got pretty much the same kids every year, so that helps. You know, we kind of got a, a routine established, I guess you could say, so that – makes my life a little bit easier at times. I think one of the reasons that you're a great choice for this job is the fact that you put so much work and time into the weight room. Uh, being a head varsity football coach is really a year-round job. I think a lot of people look at it as, well, <laughs> you know, a couple months in the fall and you're done. But you're after school with these kids, sometimes in the morning, all year long. Yeah, um, football is a year-round sport, in my opinion. And we just... To be able to compete, you know, you have to be not only mentally stronger, but you have to be physically stronger. And we've got some kids that have put in some good time, you know, that literally lift year-round, you know, three, four days a week. And, you know, if they're willing to put in that effort, I'm willing to, you know, stick around and do that with them. And, and it's nice because it carries over into the summer. We have guys that, you know, they never miss in the summer. And these are the same guys that really don't miss – during the school year and stuff like that. So the kids have, are starting to buy into, you know, that we have to do that, and they're starting to see the results. We've got some guys that, you know, have really at least look like they've gotten stronger. And, you know, I've seen them lift, and I know they're getting stronger. So Jeff Qualls is the head varsity football coach at Camden Frontier. They get ready to start the season Thursday night up at Powderville. Coach, let's talk a little bit about your background. I mean – uh, Athens High School these days has kind of fallen on hard times in their football program, but there was a time not too long ago when you were there that Athens was really right at the top. Yeah, um, <clears throat> kind of started my sophomore year. We, uh, I think we won four games that year, and uh, that head coach that we had, he, you know, he come back the next year, and we started, you know, a more aggressive weight room program, and. We uh, we did a lot of stuff over the summer. We did seven on sevens, and you know we started to buy into it. And my junior year, you know, we made the playoffs for the first time, and uh, it was a long time. And then, you know, my senior year, we went, you know, we went undefeated through the regular season and made it into a couple rounds of the playoffs where we bowed out to uh, Goebbels High School, and that's the kind of stuff I've just tried to carry over. I understand the game has changed since then, but I believe that the underlying stuff is still the same you've got to lift you've got to put in the time and you've got to be committed and that's you know that's one of the things that I've really tried to work on with these guys and I like I said I think a lot of them are, are buying into it and so hopefully it pays off Eight man football is a trend uh, for schools <clears throat> Camden size some sometimes schools even bigger than Camden have dropped down and started to play eight man uh, you've seen it with Battle Creek St. Phil um, You've heard rumblings of some other even bigger schools going down and playing eight-man. You've been pretty solid that you don't want to do it. Um, even though Camden doesn't have great numbers again this year, you still are committed to trying to make it work at the 11-man level. Why is that important to you? Well, a lot of it's probably just because I'm an old-school guy. I, you know, 11-man football, 11-on-11. 11 11, and, um, you know, it's, it's not that I dislike eight-man. I just... I think that if we can get kids out and we have enough, we should do it. Um, either way, I mean, the game of football has taught me a lot about life and then a lot about manning up. And I think some of our older guys are starting to see that. And we've had guys that have graduated come back, and, you know, they're always talking about it. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I I remember this. And they, you know, they look at how they've applied it to life. And, you know, I, I would like to see us stay 11-man. You know, I, I don't want to go to eight-man, but I do know that that's obviously the trend with the smaller schools. So hopefully we can uh, keep uh, keep getting kids out and stay at 11. You guys were very competitive last year, uh, led by Zach Malone and, and uh, Austin Church and some of those seniors. Coming into this year, you've lost a lot of those senior guys. You still have some really good seniors coming back, 
But talk about how this team compares to last year and what you're going to have to do to be successful here at Camden. Well, offensively, I mean, we uh, we lost, you know, two really solid offensive linemen uh, and Michael Manick and Paul Westfall. And then obviously losing, you know, Zach Mullen, quarterback, who started for three years, and then Austin Church as a running back for three years. Uh, those are guys that are hard to replace. Um, but we've got some guys coming in. You know, we've got Calvin Kurtz playing quarterback who has worked really good, you know, and worked really hard these probably the last month. Um, you know, in the back we got Brent Champion. He's just hard-nosed runner. Uh, you know, I don't have to worry about him not getting a couple of yards every time he touches the ball. And, you know, up front we've had to fill in some spots, but the guys are working hard. You know, we bring him back, you know, Jake Bennett and Spence Kingsley and Jay Close, and we've got a new kid, Alex Kramer, come out. He hasn't played since middle school, and he's put in a lot of work. And so, you know, we just we just got to keep working. We know that we're going to be undersized every week. It's just a matter of, you know, getting off and getting into it. And, you know, that's just the mentality we got. You bring a lot of your coach from Athens philosophy to the game. I mean, you believe in just pounding the ball, uh, running the ball, physical offensive line. Um, how have you kind of translated what you guys did at Athens with that wing tee to, to how you coach the Redskins? Well, I, I just believe that running the ball is just more effective for us as a team. We do not have, you know, the skill receivers. We can't run the spread. Um, and I just like the fact that as a smaller team undersized, if we can run the ball, get some first downs, you know, I know we're not going to score every time we have the ball, but at least, you know, take some time off the clock so that the other team is not out there. You know, give our guys a chance to get a little bit of a rest, the guys that aren't playing both ways. And, you know, I just, I think that's football. You just line up and you go smash miles straight ahead. And that's just what we're trying to do. Take a look at the SCAA this year. We talked to Mike Berger from Pittsburgh last week. Obviously, uh, Climax Scotts is always right there at the top. Bellevue has had some good teams, although they have a new coach this year. Uh, size up the SCAA for us real quick. Well, I, you know, <clears throat> being around it for the last eight, nine years, it's definitely a very physical league. You know, there's no gimme games on a Friday night. You have to be, you know, strapped up, ready to go. Obviously, Climax, you know, has had the success. Um, but, you know, you can't say anything bad about Pittsburgh because they're right there every year. You know, North Adams comes to play when we play them. You know, all our kids know their kids, and so that's kind of a, I guess you could say, kind of a rivalry-type game. You know, and then even Bellevue and Colon, you know, they're, they have not, you know, been terrible. They, you know, they just come to play. It's just our league. You, you cannot just say, oh, this is a win, you know, Monday morning at practice. You've got to be ready to go on Friday night at 7 o'clock, or you're going to get probably smacked around. Besides knowing the game, Jeff, um, I think one of the keys to your success is the fact that the kids really enjoy playing for you. The guys that actually come out and, and go through the, the practices, and you, got, you work them so hard, you and Jeff think your assistant, you guys work them so hard, and yet the kids really respect you guys. They really want to do well for you. How do you develop that relationship with these young men so that, that they're really – committed to what you want them to to do well like i said the one advantage you know is i've gone up through the ranks you know i've had some of these kids i started with them in middle school you know they got you know they got to see what kind of mentality i had as a coach and then we've just you know kept that going at the varsity level obviously you know it's a different coaching style but it's still the same you know we expect you to do your best if you make a mistake that's okay but if you make that mistake going full speed you know, doing what you're supposed to do, you're probably going to get less of a rip and then if you're just, you know, lollygagging through practice. And the guys have started to figure that out, that, you know, we might actually know what we're talking about and that, uh, you know, you've got to be you've got to be at your best at all time. And like I said, that kind of goes back to the league, is if you're not at your best, somebody from the only other team is going to let you know it. Last thing, Coach, and we'll let you go. Uh, I talked to Coach Berger last week, and just finding games is so hard now. It's so hard to get games. And, and last few years, we started off with Adrian Madison. Uh, this year, you've got an opportunity to go up and play uh, a, a different school, a, a team that we haven't faced a whole heck of a lot in. And uh, how do you match up? What do you have to do this week to come out with a successful game? 
Well, playing Potterville, um, you know, we scrimmaged them the last three years, so we kind of have an idea what they're doing. Um, but they are, they're a physical team. You know, their offensive line, they get off the ball and they're going to get into you and they're going to move you if you're not, you know, not ready to go. And same with their defense. Their defense is tough. They are just a, they're a physical team. You know, they got some, some thick guys that, you know, they're going to come hit you. And we just have, you know, been focusing on, you know, things we can focus on. We can't worry about, you know, what kind of plays they're going to run. It's just a matter of we got to be physical. We got to match their mentality and we just got to be ready to go.